WCBI News at 6 starts now. Good evening, everyone. A severe thunderstorm watch is in effect for some of our western counties. And our weather team, of course, is watching a system that could bring high winds to the area this evening. For the latest, we're going to turn it down to Chief Meteorologist Keith Gibson for tonight's first look. Keith? Well, right now we are all quiet here in our viewing area. It is mostly cloudy, to partly cloudy. It is warm and breezy, low 80s in many spots right now. There's our live Doppler radar, no issues right now. But we do have some storms beginning to pop to our west, and there's that severe thunderstorm watch, Grenada, Montgomery, and Carroll counties until 10 o'clock. Additional watches may be issued, and we will likely see at least a few warnings around here. Strong storms lining up here across southeastern and eastern Arkansas all the way down into Louisiana. This is moving east at about 50 miles per hour. I expect this line of storms to come on in here sometime after 7 o'clock, between 7 and 8 here across the west, and then that activity will cross our area, and it should be out of here by 11 or midnight. So a window of opportunity here between about 7 and midnight for some strong storms. Wind damage, the main threat, perhaps a little bit of hail, cannot rule out an isolated tornado, but wind will be the primary threat. We've got warm temperatures now. As the storms move through, we fall back into the 60s, and it looks like we're down into the 40s later tonight. If severe weather does affect your area tonight, stay connected with us on Facebook, Twitter, Instagram, Snapchat, and our email address there, weather at WCBI.com. The full forecast in just a few minutes. And in case things do get bad, the storm shelter domes in Monroe County will be open tonight. Those domes are located at Hamilton, Smithville, and Hatley Schools. The Monroe County School District sent out a tweet earlier today to alert people. Administrators say the ALC and CTE Center shelters will also be available for use if the weather gets too bad. A Noxipator man is dead after flipping his ATV. Jason Gerard flipped his four wheeler on Highway 490 near Nanawaya Sunday. Winston County Sheriff Jason Pugh says Gerard was not hit by another vehicle. It is, it is believed to be a malfunction with the front end of the ATV causing that deadly accident. Gerard was not wearing a helmet and suffered massive head trauma. Coroner Scott Gregory says Gerard died at Winston Medical Center. He was a volunteer firefighter there in Winston County. There have been two fatal ATV accidents in our viewing area since Sunday. That Winston County crash and another in Calhoun. Our Jory Talley has more on the dangers of these off-road vehicles and some important safety tips to remember while you're riding them. As the warmer weather approaches, we tend to spend more time outdoors. The hotter temps means if you enjoy riding ATVs and UTVs, it's time to start rolling them out. But before you start cranking them up, there's some important safety tips and laws to remember. In springtime, uh, rural areas, uh, folks are on their four wheelers, they're, they're riding them everywhere this time of year. Four wheelers, side by sides, you name it. Whatever wheels you turn, safety is key. Village Cycle Center Operations Manager Paula Ivey says ATVs are made for one rider and no passengers. It's a machine that you need to be able to move up and back on on that long seat uh, to be able to go up hills and down hills and around corners. Uh, the second thing is is they are for off-road use only, not for be on the streets, not on be on the ride on the side of the street. Ivey stresses drivers to watch their speed on these off-road vehicles. She says going 10 to 15 miles per hour across dirt and through fields is fast and can be dangerous. Speed and riding passengers because it changes uh, the weight distribution on it and the speed does. And you go over a little ant hill or something, that th you put you on three wheels instead of four and they can flip over. Winston County Sheriff Jason Pugh says ATVs aren't meant to be on the highways night or day. Most of them have, have headlights on, on the front and, and a, some sort of light on the rear. That, that's not designed for highway use. That's designed for, for riding it across a pasture, you know, and riding it slowly. Uh, and, and as the bikes get bigger and faster and more expensive, the, the danger increases also. Pew also stresses riders to wear helmets. He says in most ATV accidents, head trauma is involved. Most of our experiences are going to be carelessness on the, uh, on the driver of the vehicle's part. Uh, a lot of times your, your vehicles and your, your motor vehicles on the highway, your, your other vehicles don't see them, your cars don't see them. Uh, especially with, with your lower ATVs, the ones that children ride, uh, go-karts, that sort of thing. Village Cycle Center here in Startful only sells ATVs for people 16 years and older because of safety and federal regulations. Reporting here in Startful, Jory Talley, WCBI News. 
And both Pew and Ivy say although these off-road vehicles can be dangerous, they're also very helpful for hunters and farmers. Chickasaw County first responders reviewed their emergency plans today. The Mississippi Emergency Management Agency hosts a tabletop active shooter exercise for the group. The drill includes several scenarios, including schools, hospitals, and nursing homes, and how to respond. Trace Regional CEO Gary Staten hopes they'll never have to live out this exercise, but is glad it's in place. It's all about understanding. And in a crisis, we all need as much understanding and have practiced it enough to know that we would do it appropriately. Most importantly, it's about the information, who to call, when to call, you know, the specific information. Chickasaw County EMA hosts several crisis drills throughout the year. Mississippi Commissioner of Insurance and State Fire Marshal Mike Cheney was in Columbus today talking with business and community leaders about a variety of issue, his H, issues rather that his agency faces. The Republican leader confirms he will run again for his current seat. Cheney believes it's important to improve the quality of life for Mississippians. Mother has a child in her womb. She's usually covered by some type of insurance. And when you die, you usually have final burial expenses and insurance. And all in between that, you pay all of these high premiums for automobile insurance, homeowners insurance, and you want to know that it'll get any benefit out of it. It's designed to protect you so you still have some assets left. And statewide elections are just over a year away. Tupelo's mayor is in the running for the U.S. Senate seat that was left vacant when Thad Cochran retired. That's right. WCBI's Allie Martin talked with Jason Shelton the day before the big announcement and has more on the mayor's strategy to capture the seat. Tupelo Mayor Jason Shelton is no stranger to campaigning, but he knows a Senate run is a lot different than a mayor's race. I can assure you that I would not be running if I didn't think I could win. <laughs> In 2013, Shelton became the first Democrat elected mayor of Tupelo in nearly 30 years. Mayor Shelton's first term was marked by two tragic events. The murder of Tupelo policeman Sergeant Gail Stauffer and the wounding of officer Joseph Marr by a bank robber. In 2014, Tupelo was hit by a tornado that caused massive damage and gave Shelton the opportunity to work with state and federal officials as the All-America City cleaned up and rebuilt. Shelton has also managed to keep Tupelo out of debt and believes his conservative views on spending tax dollars will resonate with voters. Well, I think the, uh, you know, no new taxes, a proven ability to reduce debt, uh, budget surpluses at the end of the year, five years of record economic growth, uh, investment in quality of life, recruiting new jobs and businesses to the city of Tupelo, I think that those are things that I can run on, and those are things I'm proud of. Shelton plans to campaign for the Senate seat while continuing his duties as Tupelo's mayor. He says he plans to work hard at Tupelo City Hall, but he also knows he's going to have to work hard to get his name out statewide in what promises to be a closely watched race. There's going to be a lot of issues, and there's going to be a time and place to discuss all that. Right now, today, what we want to do is announce our campaign and you know, let the people of our state know that we're running. I think I have a proven record of being a moderate, being physically conservative, and we're going to continue to push forward on that. The special election to fill the remaining three years of Senator Cochran's term will take place November 6th. In Tupelo, I'm Allie Martin, WCBI News. Now, Governor Phil Bryant appointed former State Agriculture Commissioner Cindy Hyde-Smith to fill Cochran's seat. Hyde-Smith will run along with State Senator Chris McDaniel on the Republican side. Mike Espy has also said he intends to run for the Senate seat. This morning, the governor announced that November 6th will be the date for the special election. The qualifying deadline is April 24th. If no candidate receives a majority of the votes on the 6th of November, then there will be a runoff on November 27th. A special program is opening doors for some families across the state including two in Noxamie County. We'll take a look when we come back. WCBI News at 6 with Andrea Self and Joey Barnes. 
Welcome back. Two Knoxville County families are opening the door to a new life, to a new life with some help from the state and federal governments. The Department of Housing and Urban Development's Home Program handed over the keys to new homes to Joe Johnson Jr. and Dorothy Mallard. The program gives Mississippi three and a half million dollars for these projects every year and only selects 30 to 40 families statewide for the projects, making the process highly competitive. It really makes you feel good, especially whenever you see the conditions that the homeowners are in prior to receiving the uh, home. And then once the home is built and completed, you, you see the excitement on their faces and, and how much um, better it improves their, their quality of life. Now, these aren't just free houses given to those in need. There are certain requirements to be met to be considered for this project. For more information, you can go to our website, WCBI.com. Insurance professionals from across the southeast are in Starkville this week. Mississippi State is hosting its 31st annual Insurance Day program at the Mill. The education program is organized by the university's College of Business Risk Management and Insurance Academic Concentration. The sessions focus on current industry issues, leadership, and several other topics. We bring back a lot of people that have gone to school here. Also, um, we welcome new guests. We have several commissioners coming from um, several different states this year, so we're excited about that. Um, several of our speakers are flying in. We have over 30 speakers this year, so um, really excited about this program and excited that we have so many guests attending. Now, some of those other guests include Insurance Commissioner Cheney, you heard from earlier, MSU football coach Joe Moorhead, and MSU radio announcer Neil Price. Not much action in our neck of the woods right now. You can see that with our Alpha Insurance Camera Network in Vernon, in Tupelo, and in Columbus. But we do have some storms on radar. We'll time it all out after the break. Your first alert forecast with Chief Meteorologist Keith Gibson. 618 on our Tuesday afternoon slash early evening. All quiet here in our coverage area. There is some rain back to the northwest towards Batesville. Now, those of you out west in Montgomery, Grenada, and Carroll counties, a severe thunderstorm watch until 10 o'clock tonight. The rest of the area, not under a watch. That could change later on. We'll keep you updated. There's some strong storms out here across Arkansas and Louisiana. This is mainly a straight line wind threat there with all those severe thunderstorm warnings flashing in orange and also some storms beginning to line out out there in eastern Arkansas too. Also a wind threat more than anything else. And those are coming our way uh, just to our north from northeastern Arkansas to parts of western Tennessee, Kentucky. Uh, this is where the higher tornado potential is likely going to remain. So having said that, cannot rule out an isolated tornado this evening. Uh, the best chance for any severe weather around here, likely some straight line wind damage if we're going to get it. Uh, perhaps a little bit of hail, but probably not anything uh, widespread and a quick uh, half inch of rain or so, perhaps a little bit more, but no flooding concern. Thunderstorm energy is pretty high right now, but as we go throughout the course of the evening, notice how it just whittles away as the storms cross our area. So the storms will gradually weaken as they march east across our coverage area. Uh, back to the northwest here, 7 to 8 o'clock, that's when they'll start to come on in, and then they'll move on through and should be out of here, at least the severe weather aspect should be done by midnight, perhaps some lingering rain after that, but by morning and into tomorrow, we're looking at a lot of sunshine here with breezy northwest winds. Right now, it's gusty southwest winds 
In Columbus, 83 degrees. Sustained wind now at 16. We've been gusting up to about 25 to 30 miles per hour today. Overcast now in Tupelo, but looking at 82 degrees. Still the warmest day of the year was today. We got to about 85 or 86 around a good chunk of our region. It's still very, very warm here in Mississippi and Alabama. There are those wind speeds continuing from the south. So it's going to be a breezy evening ahead of the storms coming our way. Behind the storms, we cool back down into the mid 40s. So a chilly start to our Wednesday. A northwest wind all day long tomorrow will keep us feeling cool, but it will be sunny. Highs will be around 60 in the south. Those of you farther north, perhaps only mid to upper 50s. And again, that wind from the northwest will make it feel cool all day long. Tomorrow night, clear and calm and cold. Temperatures out into the mid to possibly low 30s, so a frost or a late freeze is possible tomorrow night. We have the front moving through now with the storms. High pressure returns for Wednesday and Thursday. Great weather, a lot of sunshine. A few clouds there on Thursday, but we are dry. The next front here coming in late Friday into Saturday morning. That will give us another chance for some showers and storms and another temperature roller coaster ride. So very warm now, much cooler tomorrow. We'll rebound a little bit by the end of this week, and then we'll cool things down again as we get into Friday night and Saturday here. So another chance for some showers and storms. I don't think that system is going to be strong or severe. We'll keep an eye on it, though. Uh, we're advertising 54 Saturday. Some of you may be cool, especially if those are cooler if those clouds hold tight a little bit longer. And again, Saturday night, we may see another frost or freeze around here with temperatures in the 30s before a rebound back into the 60s Sunday, around 70 on Monday. But we'll have another look at the radar coming up at the end of the show. A popular radio sports talk show is in Columbus today. We stop in to get their take on the top sports stories in the state and what could be when we come back. Here's sports on WCBI. It's a great time to be a sports fan in Mississippi. Athletic programs at Mississippi State, Ole Miss, and Southern Miss are all seeing huge success. Mississippi State just watched its women's basketball team compete in the national championship for the second consecutive year. Ole Miss is watching its baseball team skyrocket to the number three team in the nation. And Southern Miss's baseball team is looking to make it back to the NCAA tournament once again this year. Now, with all of this success these programs are having, it's having a huge impact here in the Magnolia State. So those sports teams, whether it's football or basketball or baseball, they're kind of the front window, um, the storefront window to the universities. And the same is true in high school and college anywhere. Those teams, they're your best marketing uh, arm that you could possibly have. And when they're winning, it affects enrollment. Those numbers go up. More people want to be there, want to go to school there. There are a lot of places where you wake up in the morning and you grab the paper, or you turn on the television, or, or flip on your computer, and you're not reading about wins and bowl trips and postseason play. And uh, we certainly have that in Mississippi right now. If you look at it just from a Mississippi State perspective, you know, our fans have had three teams in the last five years play for national championships baseball in 2013, and in the last two years, women's basketball in a national championship game. And so even though those things maybe didn't result, uh, you didn't get those championships won, you've had a fun time following them and watching them and uh, getting to extend their seasons. And so what that does is it just kind of makes everybody have a smile on their face and people are positive and businesses do better. So when the, when the athletics teams perform well, uh, it seems to kind of have an effect that reaches beyond just the field. From a recruiting standpoint, you're creating the opportunity for Mississippi kids to stay home and contribute to the schools in their home state. But then beyond that, you're also kind of creating a, a welcoming environment for, for students, for athletes from other states as well to say, I got something special going on in Mississippi, and that's something that I want to be a part of. Now, with all of the success these programs are having, not only are the schools reaping the benefits, but local businesses are also seeing a big economic boost as well. Reporting in Columbus, Quentin Smith, WCBI News. <laughs> All right, weather-wise, we have some storms coming our way. There's a big mass of rain out there in Arkansas mm -hmm. and Louisiana. We now just have a new severe thunderstorm morning for Greenville and the Delta. So a wind damage is the main threat here. Cannot rule out a, uh, an isolated tornado here. Really from uh, now it looks like between 7 and 8 to about 11 or midnight. But uh, wind the main threat as we go throughout the next uh, a couple of hours, and that system will be out of here later tonight. We will see more sun tomorrow. That's of course, good. any tornado warning, we'll have the update right here on TV. Or we'll be on Facebook Live all evening long. I've come from snow in Ohio to welcome back. Yeah, yeah, welcome back. <laughs> Thanks for joining us.